Well, the front cover of this month's Newsmax magazine brings back a, a seminal time in American politics, the rise and fall of one Richard Milhouse Nixon, and forces us to reconsider the man who left Washington in shame, but perhaps, perhaps, should be looked at with more understanding in light of what he truly accomplished. There's always two sides to a political story. Welcome to Midpoint, the president and CEO of Shirley and Bannister Public Affairs and the author of this cover piece, Craig Shirley, joins us today. Craig, thanks so much for being with us. You bet, Ed. Thank you. Craig, what is the one thing that we as Americans in 2014, remembering now that many people simply aren't aware of what happened with Richard Nixon, what is the one thing that we need to take away that is the single most important thing other than the fact he left in shame? Well, I think that he obviously was, um, in his five years in, in Washington, he was very much uh, beleaguered. You had uh, coming at the, uh, you know, at the, uh, at the tail end of the 60s, and, uh, and the 60s have been pretty much of a mess for the United States between the, the assassinations of uh, President Kennedy and Robert Kennedy and Martin Luther King and uh, 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 Vietnam and uh, with our reduced uh, prestige in the world and LBJ leaving the White House ignominiously. Um, is that he came at a, at a very, uh, very, very troubled time. And, of course, there was unrest on the campuses. And <clears throat> he came in and had no political allies in Congress. He was the first president since Zachary Taylor to come into office, into the presidency, and not have at least one uh, branch of uh, Congress that was, uh, that was controlled by his own party. So it very much was a bunker mentality that took over. I do think he doesn't get enough credit for uh, the success of uh, his Vietnamization policy, when he took office, there were 500,000 uh, troops in the, uh, American troops in, in Southeast Asia. And when he left, there, it was down to 25,000. And he, his policy of Vietnamization, of handing over control authority to uh, Saigon and the South the Vietnamese government, was working until uh, the Democratic Congress pulled the plug on it in 1975. I had a friend of mine uh, who lived through the Nixon administration and said to me, Nixon was just another politician. That's all he was. My response was, but wait a minute, he had to resign from office, he was caught cheating, and he said, wait a minute, Ed, stop. He was just another politician caught up in the late 60s and the early 70s. It seems as if we're soft-pedaling it right here, but is that a fair way to put it? I, I think that there was something extraordinarily durable about Richard Nixon, and I guess that's why we find him compelling even all these years later after he, he resigned the, um, uh, the presidency and, and, of course, died you know, 20 years ago in 1994. Uh, is, is that he was a strangely compelling figure. Um, and I guess it's because maybe so many people saw some of themselves in him, is, is that he was a, a risk taker. He didn't mind walking along the uh, precipice. He didn't mind, uh, you know, uh, he didn't mind uh, court, courting uh, failure because he knew that on the other side he believed was spectacular success. Um, and, and don't forget, he had run for national office five times. 1952, 1956, 1960, 68, and 72. So many people had already made a, had made a psychic investment in him five times. Um, and, and so they already, there were a lot of people who, including my own father, who, uh, although he was disappointed with Nixon, still felt a personal bond to him. I would say that to this day, there are still a lot of people who do feel a bond to Richard Nixon and what he brought to the country. An absolutely amazing article. It really opens up a lot of doors. Craig, thank you so much for joining us, and thanks for sharing the memories and also the news and the information. Thank you very much. All right. Reminder once again that Craig Shirley wrote the article. It is the cover of this month's Newsmax magazine. And fair to say there are a lot of people who still don't know a lot of the stories about Richard Nixon, and this will be a good chance for you to get to know. Also visit Newsmax.com for more. Now an American moment that reveals more of the time Richard Nixon was in charge of America. On October 6, 1973, while the nation of Israel observed Yom Kippur, the holiest day of the year for Jews, the combined military forces of Egypt and Syria launched a simultaneous and surprise attack on Israel's southern and northern borders. Within days, the Israeli army found itself in retreat losing a third of its equipment and outnumbered by the enemy three to one. As he could not believe, he said, we cannot stop them. Recognizing their very existence was at stake, President Nixon moved quickly to resupply our ally Israel and their besieged army. With an around-the-clock airlift of U.S. military support, the tide of battle shifted, and soon the Israeli armies were advancing into both Syria and Egypt with Israeli General Ariel Sharon's tanks threatening Egypt's Third Army with annihilation. The Soviet Union, who were supporting the Arab armies, 
quickly called upon President Nixon to stop the Israelis' advance or risk a larger war. The president intervened, saved the Egyptian army, and then used the opportunity to convince Egypt's President Anwar Sadat to seek a peaceful solution to a conflict that had plagued the region for decades. You're watching An American Moment on Newsmax TV.